2020 has been a pretty big year for designers and tech companies. We've seen a closer look at how companies such as Apple are creating their devices and updating them so creators can use them with more input methods in mind. Not only have we got the Apple Pencil over the past few years we've been using that, but recently we had the biggest update for a lot of us designers who own iPads and that is mouse and trackpad capabilities and this isn't just some basic mouse or trackpad capabilities it's pretty huge it actually works pretty well today in this video i'm going to be showing you how i use the mouse and trackpad or either or both inside of an app on the ipad called vectornator pro which is a free vector app where you can do all your vector designs it is unreal and they've just had a big update as well so you might want to go click that link down below to check them out and download it for free before we get into the video please press that big red subscribe button down below it always helps to know when i do a good video so share it as well and become part Part of the family here on YouTube. So here is the first tutorial of me showing you how to achieve the new morphic design effect inside of Vectinator using the trackpad and mouse. Enjoy. This video is brought to you by Vectinator. So here is the new Vectinator update. You may be able to see something a bit different here. One of them I am controlling the iPad with my trackpad and you can actually use a trackpad now or a mouse. The other thing is obviously the user interface. It looks a bit different. It's actually scaled down a little bit, but not only that, it's got a white theme now as well. You've got the light and dark theme, but not only that, I can actually use my keyboard as well to create and to design and do everything that I need to do. This is kind of a strange setup because it's in the same way uh, as you guys may see it in a normal video when I'm using my Apple Pencil, but this is the best way for me to show you. So nowadays, the iPad has become something that we can actually use as a fully fledged computer, especially with this new update where we can use a mouse or a trackpad. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into an iPhone 10 template. You can get these at the start or you can go to templates up here and then go to your templates or you can go ahead when you go back you can go to ios and choose a template here and you can bring that up and just drag it in and you've got loads of templates uh, that you can use for your work now i'm going to show you a really cool way of designing this new morphic type of graphic on your work inside of vector it's super simple and it means that you can actually design cool depth based effects with your shape First thing, we need to change the color of the background. So I've actually got a layer on the background here with a color on it and I've locked it. And this color is over here on the fill, but if you want to, you can just click this and it will show you here. And I've got a palette of different colors there. Now the background here of this is a slight light gray. It's not white. And the reason why is we need to have two shapes that one white pokes out of to give a highlight and also so we can have a shape that fits to the background color. So what we do, first of all, once you've got your background shape is go ahead and go to the square tool here. We need to go ahead and round these corners. So I'm gonna round them to about 60, making sure, as you can see there, I need to be on my new layer there. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new shape. I'm gonna use this, the rectangle tool with the shift right here to create that shape. You can see it there, it's got the same fill. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and basically create a shadow. And all we need to do is press the shadow button down here. I'm gonna create like a gray shadow. So we're gonna to go to about there. And what I'm gonna do is make sure the offset and the blur are correct. The sort of the bigger the blur, and the bigger the offset, the nicer it will look. Now we've got a depth effect here, but we need to go ahead and copy this. So go ahead and press Command C or go up here, just copy it and then paste it. What we're gonna do with this next one is we're gonna actually change the direction. You can see that we're gonna change the direction of the shadow to the exact opposite end, which is here. We're gonna change the color, go to the white over there and click away. And now we've got this cool pneumorphic look. All we need to do now is select both of those shapes group them together and we've got the new morphic effect and that's how it's basically done and you can do this and apply this to any shape inside of vaccinator as well which is really fun you can scale it up and down well i hope that tutorial for the new morphic design helped you here's another way that i've been using the trackpad and mouse on my ipad which is through the pencil and also just creating cool logo types and letters 
So this is an image that I imported and you may have seen it on my Instagram, but this is like my sort of hand lettering. You can see it's very much not vectorized at all. But I want to go ahead and create this as that kind of like a logo. I don't, I don't want it to be hand lettered anymore. I want it to look really clean. So what we need to do is go ahead and take this layer here or this image that we've got to press A to get my selection tool. We're going to take this to around 20% or 30. Click away and you'll see it's done something there. And I'm going to keep it at 30. I'm going to go ahead and lock that layer and you can rename it if you want, but I just do it on the fly really. I just remember where they all are. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my layers here. Go to my format here. And I don't want to fill here. I want to actually use a stroke. So I'm going to press this little button, which will swap it to filter stroke. And then I'm going to take the stroke width to about 0.5. Just type it in here. I'm going to use my square tool again, making sure that it's just a perfect square and it's not got this roundness feature on it. And I'm going to start off with an eye. Now, the great thing about black letter is that it's super easy just to go ahead and create cool shapes and to keep it consistent because it is basically just blocks. So what we do is I've created my shape here and I've got it. So the shape is roughly the same width around. Now, this is going to be the baseline shape. Now all I'm going to do is press S, which will take me to my node selection tool. And notice how my cursor has changed into this actual node cursor here, which is really cool. Holding shift, I'm going to drag this up here. Holding shift, I'm going to drag this down. Oh, we've got a little arrow going there. I'm going to drag this down here. I'm going to manipulate this, but I need it to be straight all the way. Same with this one. I want to drag it down. And I'm not going to do it perfectly because it is still just hand lettering. So I, I don't need to get the angles exact. Something I'm also going to do is get some guides in here as well to keep everything consistent. So I'm going to go to the ruler section over here and just drag some rulers kind of where I want it. So drag this one there and drag this one there. And this will give me a nice little baseline of where I want my shapes to start and finish. From here, I'm just going to go to the pen tool really quick. And I'm just going to pen tool it in. So I'm going to make sure that I'm just... I'm kind of in the same way around all this. We can always edit this as well, such as this. This needs to come out a little bit like so. Then I'm gonna use my pen tool again and bring it over here and close this shape. Move the shape into here. Now that we've got the top one, we're gonna go ahead and copy it down. I'm gonna do it until it hits the bottom here because I want everything to hit the bottom. This is where it needs to finish. So instead of actually just keeping it like this i'm going to move the fur shape up ever so slightly so i'm going to shift click those little points there holding shift drag it up then i'm going to go ahead and move the first little slate here and i know it's not exactly on the line but it doesn't matter because i'm just trying to create the effect of black letter i don't want it to be perfect perfect otherwise it kind of looks weird so i'm going to keep manipulating these shapes until it fits correctly all the way around now that we've got that what you can do is i like to do this anyway it's just to take one of the shapes like so to just drag it over here and just keep it there so we have a way to come back to if we ever mess it up now i'm just going to select all of these using the selection tool going over to the path function and then just merge them all together now if this hasn't merged in that's most likely because we've not actually overlapped it enough so i'm going to just bring these down a little bit more kind of like so zoom out again and i'm using my trackpad to do this and there we go We've got our shape. Now what we can do is basically using our selection tool, we can alt drag all the way through and use this as basically our template for each of the letters. With the H, we can just move this up, drag it all the way to the top. You see these little anchor points, we can get rid of those. And it's super easy. As you can see, it doesn't take very long at all. You just need to worry about the one shape and then when you drag them over, it will look very consistent all the way around. We do the same for the E here. Now for the E, we can do this a bit differently. We can take obviously these little nodes here that we don't need, but we can also match it like so. Then we just go ahead and use a selection tool, take this to the D as well, keeping it straight. And for anything like this down here, so you can see down here, we've got like a connector missing. I'm gonna just go eyeball it for a second here, but I'm just gonna create a connector over here. And the great thing about 
using Vectinator when doing this is everything's highly editable through vector shapes. I'm gonna just drag this one up here as well because we need this one to be up here. I'm gonna change the rotation of it ever so slightly as well. There we go. Delete this one. I prefer the rotation of this one to so drag this one back down. And it basically starts to feel more like a computer as you go. And if we go ahead, and I'm not gonna do the whole thing because it can take quite a while, but if you go ahead and select everything, you can create the fills like so again. And you can see how we're just matching everything in here. So as you can see through those two tiny little tutorials that I showed you today to achieve the pneumorphic design look and also a black lettered look, you can tell that the iPad now with the added capabilities of using mice and trackpads really does allow you to work on an iPad only if you want to be an iPad only guy. Technology is moving at such a rapid pace and it's great to know that companies are actually giving us the ability to use mouse and trackpads on the iPad. You never know, it could become the next only one-shot design system that you would ever need. I just want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, Vectinator. The application that I was using in this video is a free vector drawing app where you can create anything from logos to make your own typeface. You can even prototype and design your own own apps inside of it. It's really powerful and the best thing about it, it is completely free. If you'd like to download Vectinator on your Mac, your iPad and obviously your iPhone as well, then click the link down below in the description to learn more. Guys, thank you for watching this. I hope it helped you. I don't know if you are as excited as I am for this now that I can use my trackpad and my keyboard to actually do design work on it. Let me know your thoughts down below and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon. Goodbye. Psst.